Meeting to order tonight for the City of Saratoga Springs, Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Present tonight, I have Councilwoman Barton, Councilman McComber, Councilman Wilden, Councilman Karn, Councilman Wadman. So we do have a quorum this evening. I've asked Councilman Wilden to lead us in our invocation. And then our new Miss uh, Saratoga Junior, uh, Annalise, to lead us in our pledge. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful to be able to be gathered here this evening, City Council, Mayor, and we're grateful to be able to meet with residents and other other individuals that contribute to the growth and success of our community. And we ask you to bless us with thy spirit that we'll be able to make good decisions for the long term of our existing residents and and those who may come in the future. And these things we say in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just start. I. I. Just say I. Oh, I. I. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for letting us put you on the spot and doing that tonight. Okay, with the uh, council's approval, we're going to move item five up next, the recognition of Miss Saratoga Springs Royalty 2024. Mayor and Council, we are delighted to introduce our 2024 Miss Saratoga Springs Royalty Court. Our Queen, Reagan Rowley. First Attendant, Rose Barnes. Second Attendant, Kylie Priday. Junior Miss, Annalisa Roman. Annalise Roman, sorry. <laughs> and our Junior, or excuse me, our Little Miss, Aspen Rowley. So our Junior and Little Miss um, got their titles by first going through a a essay contest followed by a um, interview process and they were chosen and then our queen and her attendants were chosen at our Miss Saratoga Springs pageant on March 9th. We look forward to them serving our community both through their service projects and at our events as well as representing our community in other cities at parades and other events like that. So. Do you have any questions or anything? Yes. No? I yeah. always put Miss Saratoga Springs on the spot, so hopefully you prepared her. I'd love to hear what her platform and what she wants to do for her service this year. Yeah. Hi, guys. It's so nice to see you, meet you. Um, I actually already did um, a part of my service project. I don't know if you guys have heard of Cinderella Dress Project. Mm -hmm. You guys know what that is? Um, I was actually the student who brought that to Westlake my sophomore year. Um, the founder, Angela Miller, she's an amazing lady. She just passed away on Saturday, and her funeral is tomorrow. Um, so that's kind of a super sad thing. Um, but her impact on our community was just super amazing. And Cinderella Dress Project has been able to help so many girls all throughout Westlake, all throughout the community. Um, with the last couple of sales we've done, there's been people like all throughout the district who've started coming. And it's now one of the biggest um, fundraisers in all of Alpine School District. So I definitely think that that's a way to help our youth. And the dresses, yes, they're also amazing, but they're suits too um, for young men. So yeah, um, I just am hoping to be a place of light and love and just help wherever I can and however I can. So. Well, thank you very much. And that sounds like a wonderful project. And I'm glad that you'll be able to help continue that legacy forward. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your support of this, this great program. We appreciate it. We'll see you in June. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, uh, time has been set aside for public input. Um, public input is limited to no more than 15 minutes total. Please avoid repetitive comments and please limit individual comments to no more than three minutes. Please be respectful in your comments. Please state your name and address for the record. If you're here 
for um, consent item five, resolution formally initiating the proceedings under the pending ordinance doctrine of Utah to update the transportation master plan to include a new cross section for Pioneer Crossing Freeway. You're welcome to comment tonight. Your comments are probably best used at the uh, public hearing at Planning Commission when that is scheduled. This tonight is just to allow it to go to a public hearing um, on the consent calendar. And the public hearing too. And the, and the public hearing. There's one right here. So if they want to oh, speak to that. Oh, yes, and if you're here for the public hearing tonight for the proposed budget amendments for fiscal year 2023-2024, you would be the first in city history. But wait till then. <laughs> but wait till then. Um, I will open the mic. Um, do we have somebody timing tonight, Mark? Oh, perfect. Good evening, um, Mayor Miller and Council members. My name is Chris Foster. I'm a, a business owner in Saratoga Springs. I employed in Saratoga Streams about 14 years. We own the, um, one of the buildings on Thrive Drive, affected on Resolution 5. So I, I really actually wanted to hold our comments and I appreciate that. But my question, I guess, is if um, the council is aware of the proposal by Lehigh City for their um, updated traffic plan for their three options that they had. Are you guys aware of that? And have you guys had an opportunity to, to view that? As well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is that what process comes in place? Is that where the public hearing is where you guys would weigh in, prove option number one on the Lehigh one or option number two? Have you for, already made that decision? I guess for which cross section? Yeah. Exactly. It's we're still in the process of working with all the cities. Okay. Um, normally this isn't a dialogue point, but right. I, well, thank you. I appreciate. We are it. interacting with neighboring cities. Okay. Perfect. I just was going to uh, offer if you hadn't been aware of that present. Happy to uh, pay for that to, presentation to occur because obviously we would prefer as a community uh, member uh, on that uh, intersection to prefer not to have that be there. Obviously, everyone's not going to want it in their own backyard, but obviously we like to work with all the other city uh, cities involved, including American Fork and Lehigh, because I believe they both uh, pr uh, support option number two on that, that proposal. So thank you. Hi, I'm Jeremy Baker. I'm a former candidate for city council in Lehigh uh, last year, and I'm a Lehigh resident in uh, Holbrook Farms. I know traffic is really important for all of us, um, and I know one of the biggest things that the mayor of Lehigh does not want is something that going along Pioneer Crossing. So I know you guys are gonna be evaluating sending this to planning commission, and I would encourage that it be tabled and not considered because it should be worked with Lehigh City. And there is a proposal that Lehigh City would prefer, which would send a freeway along the north shore of Utah Lake on the south side of Lehigh that would connect over to um, Pony Express Parkway and Saratoga Road, um, ideally getting it out of residential areas entirely from Lehigh. Thank you. Um, my name is Erin Shepard, and um, I live on in Lehigh off of Pioneer Crossing in between 2300 West and 1700 West. Um, and I also support um, the second option, for obvious reasons, I've lived there for 18 years and before Pioneer Crossing was even there. Um, I've contacted multiple people, um, Christopher Karn, uh, Gina, um, and other people trying to, at UDOT, trying to talk some sense. I'm not getting a lot of response. I've been trying for over a year. Um, but I would propose that, um, that set, well, we, you're calling it 450 North. I think is what the Saratoga road is. Um, it's option two in Mayor um, Johnson's plan. The, the land is there now to be widened and it's available. And I would propose that possibly looking at that as a commuter lane, three lanes into Saratoga, three lanes out of Saratoga, ending at 2300 West, um, there where your boat marina is gonna be with um, an access off into Loch Lomond neighborhood south of it. 
That allows a lot of people to bypass Pioneer Crossing. Pioneer Crossing can be widened to six lanes if they take the side out. Um, and then when you get to the end of Pioneer Crossing, um, or it, when Pioneer Crossing meets 2300 West, 2300 West is being widened to five lanes. You can widen Pioneer Crossing there and people coming off of 2300 West, the land is there right now to put a right-hand lane onto 2300 West that would funnel people away from Pioneer Crossing, which would allow Pioneer Crossing to be, you know, more of a Lehigh Road, which it was meant to access all of our neighborhoods. And um, I would also love to propose that the development south of the road on um, 450 North um, be, I, I would love to not see any of it. I'm with a group of residents trying to preserve the trail, the shoreline trail um, there, and it's just spectacular. It's the most, one of the most beautiful parts of Utah County, and I believe Saratoga has the right to preserve that for future generations and not to build right up to that trail. Um, so widen your road, get a wide road there, and maybe leave that area south of it as undeveloped as possible, and um, then that's kind of a win-win for everyone. So um, I just, again, would, uh, there's a lot of people, there are people I know and love that you would be displacing from their homes that have built their families there, and that's just not something to take lightly. We were there way before all of this was here, and um, it's just, I, I know you would consider that, but um, I just want you to know that there's spaces and families and people that belong to each of those homes that would be proposed to be taken out. So, thank you. Hello, my name is Bryce Carter. I'm also a owner of Alpine Pediatrics. We have two offices here in Saratoga. Um, one of which would be heavily impacted um, with the proposal of the change. Um, my, my comment would be to just, just again urge caution um, in the stance that the master plan was created so that people could plan where to place businesses, where to live. Uh, it's incredibly unfair to then change that master plan uh, to those who have who tried to use the information that was provided to the citizen to try to make a plan moving forward. Um, and would just urge that I, I urge caution, and, and I know that there's a lot to think about in that, but that would significantly impact our business. Um, appreciate your guys' time. Thanks. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, my name is Matt Bender. I'm also a Lehigh resident. Um, he's not a prop. He, my, my wife wouldn't have been happy if I left her with both kids. Um, our backyard backs up to Pioneer Crossing. It would be a terrible thing to have it go through that way. And I'm one of many, many people on that road that would be negatively affected as a, a residential home. Um, I also think from the business standpoint, it, it's it's really unfair to the businesses there. There's a storage unit that is location, location, location. They would be toast from it. There's car washes, there's dental offices, there's everything along there that location matters. And they planned, like you said, according to that master plan. And then changing that up completely can, can, can change the outlook of those businesses as well. So once again, reiterate the, the desire that the, the, the shoreline, the North Shoreline uh, road be created instead of using Pioneer Crossing. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Larson. I actually also live right off of Pioneer Crossing. It's in my backyard. And we love the accessibility to everything. Um, we just recently moved back to Utah from Florida. We've been there for a while. And we love where we live here. We love the people. Our neighborhood is full of incredible, incredible people. Um, and I'm grateful that I get to be here um, today. I just recently learned about this meeting, but I don't know much, but I do know that I am one of those faces that she was talking about that would be greatly impacted um, if there was a freeway to be put there. Um, and I just wanted to say hello. Um, I appreciate your time. And I, 
I don't know if this is something as I'm learning that there, there's other options to, to place the freeway or have better accessibility in other places, but my family would be greatly affected by this decision. Thank you. Okay. We've got time for one more comment, then I will close the public input. Hi, my name is Sierra Slider, and my backyard backs up to Pioneer Crossing. I have lived there for 12 years. I have been there when Pioneer first started developing and getting large, and I was told at the time when I built my home that there was a possibility that Pioneer Crossing was going to have a third lane added to it, which was understandable, completely fine with that. But the fact that UDOT has now come through and decided that they are not only planning on expanding the road enough to take over my backyard, but my home itself that I have been in for 12 years, I find it completely disgusting. I also want to point out the fact that UDOT plans on using 500 West to be access to this busy road. 500 West is point, or I'm sorry, Pioneer Crossing is 0.8 miles away from an elementary school, 0.5 miles away from a four-way stop that 100 children use every single day to get to and from school. Pioneer is not an acceptable option to become a Bangor Road and for my personal reasons, but also you need to think of the safety of children. I know that's not your city, that's not your children, but all it takes is one child to be killed before we realize what a mistake this is. I think this is something that we need to address and take care of now and be responsible not only to the citizens of Lehigh City, but the children also. Think about your child going on a busy road to elementary school every day. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I'm sorry. We're going to close it. Can I have 10 seconds? 10 seconds. Two words. Government accountability is on the ballot. Okay. UDOT is unelected government, and they promise to keep that 35 miles an hour and to keep it looking good. And so if we are going to trust our government, we need to have representation. And okay. thank you so much for being that We person. need your name for the record. My name's David Johnson, and I live on 1111 South 2035 West and will be affected. Okay. Thank you. Uh, close public hearing at this time. I appreciate the residents um, coming to share their concerns on Pioneer Crossing. Having been born and raised in Lehigh, most of my family lives there. I'm very familiar with the area that way. Um, on that, tonight's motion, as stated earlier, was just to get this to a public hearing to have the discussion you're asking for tonight, to have the research done, to make that motion. Um, so understanding what the motion is tonight. It's not approving what you're asking to stop. It's asking for the discussion to make the decision um, through the public processing process with government. Um, just so that was clear with the three different roads, um, the one on the lake, Saratoga is just not a fan of it. It wipes out a marina, destroys a shoreline that is very, very beautiful and rare to have in Utah. Um, but there are other options. Okay, um, reports. Uh, first off, Congressman Owen's office reached out Monday. The U.S. Postal Service, after almost 10 years, has agreed that the Lehigh Post Office is undersized to service the western half of Utah. So, <laughs> that is a breakthrough. <laughs> the western half of Utah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They, they have talked to Congressman Owen's office, let them know that after 10 years of pointing data out to them, they have conceded that we may be right on the, on the fact of the post office. They are, Congressman Owen's office has done more for us in the last three years than the predecessors in the prior seven. Um, we're able to do for us with the post office. They are asking for us to come up with land. We've got the BLM piece we're looking at and some others um, to work with other cities. I spoke with them and asked that we have our economic development director, Doug, lead out with the three cities as a liaison to start looking for that and then bring in a work session if we can schedule that and invite the other two neighboring cities to have a work session with us and allow Congressman Owen's office to come present what they need to go to the post office to get us moving in the right direction. So this is kind of the first traction on a post office. Okay, other council reports? Councilman McComber, or yeah, we comment just, on that? Yeah. Okay. Who are the, are you talking about 
Lehi Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Council Member. Just wanted to recognize um, Tag and Go open today. Um, well, they've been open for a soft opening, but they had their grand opening ribbon cutting. Uh, it's great to have another service provided to our community right on the Lehigh border there. Um, and uh, yeah, they're excited to be in the community. And with the combination of their indoor facility over on 2100 in this, this is a great opportunity to service the people on the west side. And then Eagle Mountain has a location as well. Okay. Any other council reports, administration? Mayor and Council, uh, we have no need for a closed session this evening, um, so that is not necessary on the agenda. Um, we are working on quite a few items. Um, one of the things that you have tonight is your, your tentative budget presentation. Um, that will be uh, the next, one of the next items coming up here. Um, we'll plan on discussing that mostly at the offsite. Uh, when we have that in a couple of weeks. And so as far as details go, if you have any specific questions, happy to tackle those. Um, but we'll plan on focusing on that uh, at that time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have anything for finance you wanted to add before we get to the hearing? Okay. Okay. Perfect. We want it quick. <laughs> Budget business items. Possible motion for reconsideration of denial of wildflower community plan. No takers? Applicant request. So um, I think the plan was to invite them up to propose that request. Yes. Yeah, and if you have any questions, sit. Mayor and Council, you, you can stand, Nate, your choice. <laughs> You're used to the hot seat. Did you want him Thank to you, sit? Thank you, Mayor. You want him to go that long? You, what was that? Did you want him to sit? We don't want him I to go know, that I long. Didn't, I didn't know if Wadsworth was coming up, too. <laughs> Would entertain a motion to ask me to leave the meeting? <laughs> I second. <laughs> My name is Nate Ship. I'm here representing the applicant. Uh, we would uh, politely ask you to reconsider uh, the motion that was made last meeting for reconsideration to allow us to come back with some additional ideas. Uh, simply just a, an opportunity for us to come back and present some additional things that we've got uh, in the works that we think would uh, better facilitate what that property is hopefully going to be. So tonight we're just asking for reconsideration. Oh, go you for it, Councilman Wilden. You know, I, I'm comfortable, you know, I'm the one that made the initial motion for denial that was passed. I, I'm comfortable reconsidering it for a table to bring it forward. I would just ask, and this goes into the next motion, assuming that this passes and then we do a table, the future one that um, everyone needs to go back, not everyone here, but <laughs> the, the, you know, the applicant go back and listen to the comments and everything that we said before is still applicable. Um, so, you know, there was a comment made in the last meeting, well, we'll just bring back some renderings of what the buildings will look like. If that's what happens, it's just going to be an automatic no, at least for me. So it needs to go back, look at the elevations, look at the mix, the, the size. I mean, the transportation plan. And, and I know we've discussed that, but, you know, adding up the numbers, I can't remember, it's like 10,000 trips, semis a day. This, the whole thing, so it's going to need to be a rework, not just like a rendering of here's what this great building is going to look like 65 feet in the air. Um, I'm being a little facetious there, but the, the not really. <laughs> but I legitimately, like, if that's what comes to here, I'll be, I can't do this. I just play a video game while you're presenting. I don't play video games. And you it's can't so do funny. that legally either <laughs> during a council meeting. Um, but it, I would be tuned out and then just motion no in the future. Does that, I mean, that's my comment. Well, and I appreciate. I don't play video games up here. <laughs> I appreciate council member um, your comments. I just, I could not have been more clear how frustrated I was last time. I mean, you weren't here, Nate. I mean, we've worked together for many years. This project has been, I mean, a long time. And the vision of this area, we've talked about. 
Yep. And we had some wonderful discussions and ideas and how this could be a mixed use with lots of different types of uses here. Yes, some, some bigger buildings that we could be sectioned off. Um, we, we made it very clear that we didn't want big distribution centers, <clears throat> you know, and we wanted a mix with retail. And I mean, it's just a wonderful location. And it's, it's really the heart from the city of Saratoga Springs into your big overall development. I know it's not yours really anymore, but it is still your baby. I mean, come on, you work really hard on the wildflower development. And so I, I echo the comments that are being made. I, I really came in not ready to recognize this. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to. One of the things that I was very concerned about was is the amount of cost and time and energy that has gone into this on the city side. Taxpayer fund money that goes into this. I was very pleased to hear that you as a developer, representing the developer, have been paying your impact on that and will continue to do so. So I will be willing to reverse the motion for denial and then potentially table it um, because you will be paying for the resubmittal because it will be full work again to try and um, have the staff go and look at that completely um, from start from the very beginning. So that's why I'm willing to, as long as um, the developer is paying the impact to the city staff and the city staff is not being impacted negatively. Okay. Councilwoman Barton. I just want to say I came, same thing I came in here to, uh, well, today I was like, I am, I'm not going to approve this because we've been so against it and we just are not happy with what's going in there. But I did ask a few questions and I got a few things clarified and so I'm on the same page. Like, I, again, um, just to, to kind of not really copy, we don't do that, but what these guys had said, the other council members, um, it just needs to be changed. But um, I'm willing to, to look at it again as long as we get back what kind of, I mean, I wasn't here the first time I was here watching. I wasn't part of the council when you guys first presented it, but I remember the, the comments from the other uh, council members and the same thing as it was last time when I was a member of the council. And so if you guys could just please, again, if you need to listen to those comments again and just take those. Um, but I appreciate these guys answering my questions and um, our awesome city manager for answering a lot of my questions as well. Um, and and honestly, I I... Yeah, I, I'll just I'll just stop there. So thank you for bringing it back. I appreciate like you guys being proactive. Um, I, I being proactive is always a good thing to be. But um, yeah, so please just listen to those comments and come back with you know some ideas that we that we've kind of asked for up here. Okay. If there's no other comments. I will entertain the motion to reconsider and then the motion to table. Just, I, I'm sorry. Oh, for well, process. I was just going to mention that someone who voted with the with the majority has to make that motion. And then it has to be approved by three votes per year bylaws, just okay. process-wise. And then you would you would make a new motion after that, of course, to table the matter. A second and a third. Okay. Okay. So I'll entertain the first motion. I will move that we reconsider the denial of wildflower community plan um, that was made on March 12, 2024, as stated on the agenda. I'll be the second. I have a first from Councilman Wilden, second from Councilman McComber. I'll third, because I don't know if I'll ever do that again. And a third from <laughs> Councilman Karn. Yeah. Okay, then roll call, since we kind of know the direction. Councilman Barton. Aye. Comber. Aye. Wilden. Aye. Karn. Aye. Wadman. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Did we do that right, Kevin? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now the new motion. Now we need a new motion. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will entertain the motion. I move that, I don't have it in front of me, we table, um, Kevin, Just, you may need to help me out. We, we table the, what was the previous item one? Yeah, we, we copied it directly from the last agenda, so it would be yeah. wildflower community plan, et okay. So that's exactly the same language, including ordinance 2408. Okay, I move that we table the wildflower community plan major amendment number four as stated on the agenda presented to us on March 12th, 2024 to a future meeting. Okay, I have a first from Councilman Wilden, a second from Councilman Karn. Any further discussion? Just to make sure that if you want serious consideration that it is drastically different. I think I got the message. Okay. Now it's, but, <laughs> but now it's on the I record. I am slow. Yeah, now so it's on the record. I do appreciate it. <laughs> it's because you didn't feed your horses. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman Barton. Aye. McComber. Aye. Wilden. Aye. Karn. Aye. Wadman. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Mm. 
Thank you, Thank Nate. You. Thank you, Elizabeth, for reaching out to open the dialogue um, when we both kind of missed that mark and had opened that discussion. Oh. And Mayor, just a Thank note you. on the, the minutes as well that are on the consent calendar. Since I would leave the minutes as is if, if you didn't have any changes otherwise, but have the city recorder add a note that that decision was reconsidered at this meeting okay. and, and changed to table. So some, some note on the minutes for that, but okay. that would require you to pull that off the consent calendar. Okay, then I will entertain a motion on the consent calendar. I move that we approve the consent calendar and we need to pull the minutes and then make that a separate motion? Or can well, you can, you, you can make it with this And motion. then as part of the motion to, for the consent calendar to direct staff to include a note on the minutes that the decision for the wildflower community plan ordinance 24-08 on 3 24 was reconsidered and changed on today's um, plan, uh, meeting. Okay, I have a first from Councilwoman Comber. I'll second. Second from Councilwoman Barton. Any other discussion? I do have one more thing. Just the, I'm, I apologize for this. I did not catch this before, but the eminent domain, so uh, consent oh, yes, item number needs four pulled. needs to be moved to the business item. I'll amend my okay. motion to pull the um, condemnation, what item is it? Four. Item four. 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 Um, from the consent calendar to be discussed as a business item, which will become Business per item mayor's, nine. Per, per the mayor's decision, okay. where he would like to have that in the business yep. items. I have an amended first. I'll second the amendment. Amended second. Councilman Wadman. Aye. Karn. Aye. Wilden. Aye. Comber. Aye. Barton. Aye. Motion passes unanimously on the consent. We have the public hearing for the proposed budget amendments, fiscal year 2023-2024, resolution R24-5. Evening, Mayor and Council. This is the fifth budget amendment for this year. Um, just a quick summary. Most of the items are either having to deal with revenues. Um, That's fortunately for us, revenues are coming in stronger than we anticipated, so we increased the budget for those lines. Uh, most of the lines are dealing with capital projects. Uh, this far into the year, we're just adjusting those to better reflect what has been the realities on the ground. Uh, any questions for staff at this time? Any questions for staff? Okay, this is a public hearing on the uh, proposed budget amendments for fiscal year 2023-2024. Uh, we please come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Please avoid repetitive comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Is anybody here for comments on the proposed budget amendments? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Mayor, I've just got a quick question. This okay. is on our current budget year, um, when do we get, when do we do a temporary or a preliminary approval of next year? So um, you received the tentative budget tonight. We'll discuss it at our offsite. And then um, it needs to be adopted um, probably in May. So we'll that's probably- That's the tentative adoption. That's the tentative adoption. So we can operate under that. And then w once you adopt a tentative budget, theoretically that actually carries you into the next year yep. if you are doing a tax increase, which we are not proposing. Um, but if we are not proposing a tax increase, we have to have the budget adopted prior to or on June 22nd. Okay. So we have until the end of June to formally adopt the budget. My guess is that it would likely be on probably the first meeting in, in uh, June for that as well. All right, thanks. Okay, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve public hearing item one, proposed budget amendments, fiscal year 23-24, resolution R24-25, dated today with any conditions uh, in the staff report. I have a first from Councilman Karn. Second. Second from Councilman Wadman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We have a business item. Do we'll pull four, Kevin, if you're ready, and do that item first. Yeah. Um, let me just give some brief information about this. There is a, a well and other utility improvements that the city needs to install on a couple parcels that are just north in Saratoga Springs, but just north of Pioneer Crossing. Their Utah County parcels number 58031003 and 58036 um, These parcels were formerly owned by um, Scott McLaughlin. 
and now are owned by, by two uh, separate LLCs, MFRE River Jordan Mink Ranch North, SLLC and MFRE River Jordan Mink Ranch South SLLC. So this resolution in front of you will um, authorize the city to proceed with filing eminent do domain proceedings. Under the state law, the property owner is entitled to uh, speak at this meeting. I'm not sure if the property owner is here, but there was a letter that was submitted by Gary Curl, who represents the property owner. But if the property owner is here, we, we should invite the property owner up to speak, but only the property owner. Is the property owner here? Okay. Okay. So in the letter, and you all received a copy of that, dated April 3rd, 2024, uh, the property owner, or the Mr. Curl representing the property owner, voiced some objections. You, you've seen that letter. We will provide that to the city recorder, um, so that's part of the record. Um, they mentioned that the city has some existing easements that it can use. However, we've determined through a study with Hanson, Allen, and Luce that going that other direction would cost the city almost an extra $2 million. Um, there's also some al other allegations there that the city um, actively prohibited um, some development from occurring on the property. That's not true. There was never a formal application that was filed, just for the record. Um, and they have requested that the letter be, that's why I'm going over this, they've requested that the letter be read into the record. Um, I think it's okay to summarize that. Um, but if you want, I can proceed. It's three pages long. And it, but you're including the whole letter in the record. We are including the entire record. You've all received that. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was basically a re repeat from the February letter. Correct. So as you know, that because we have to do this again because the property owner changed. It was moved into these separate LLCs, and that's why we have to go this, mm -hmm. this route again. Um, so let's see. That, those were the two objections, and then he, they're also objecting to the value of it which isn't determined at this point, that will be determined through the lawsuit. Um, and there's also some other minor minor concerns. Those will, like I said, those will all, those will be, those issues will be worked out through the eminent process. Okay. Kevin, there's a quick question from Councilman Wilden. You bet. Could they continue to change property owners and we have to keep forming new LLCs or whatnot <laughs> and force us to continue to go down this repeatedly? At this point, no. As of today's day, that's the same. It's this property owner, so okay. it would not. We would not have to go through that. Okay. And Thank we will. We'll, we're going to proceed with filing this the eminent domain proceedings. Um, as always, we work with the property owner uh, to try to try to negotiate it throughout this process. Um, the property owner has indicated that they'd like to go to the property rights ombudsman, which is which is their right, and they can do that but we need to proceed with, with filing the, the eminent domain proceeding. Okay, I will entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve consent item five <coughs> as stated on the agenda, including any, is it five? <coughs> it was oh. consent four. Yeah, yeah four, sorry, four. I had five circled. Um, business item four as stated on the agenda, including any staff findings. I have a first from Councilman Wilden. I'll second, but that's consent item four, not business item four. Yes. Yeah. Didn't I say consent? You said, you said business item the four. second. It's okay. All right. <laughs> I, I will amend my motion. To consent. Consent. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, consent first consent item four. I have first from Councilman Wilden, second from Councilman Karn. Councilman Barton? Aye. McComber? Aye. Karn? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Wadman? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, consent or business item two about time uh, pub and grill site. You did the first one when you formally called that. Said, be Good evening, Mayor and Council. No. Uh, this item is the site plan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> went black. This is the site plan for the Bout Time Pub and Grub site at 1422 North Redwood Road. This is the standalone building uh, on the lot just north of Walgreens in the regional commercial zone. Uh, the proposed structure, again, is a standalone building just over 5,000 square feet on a 0.91 acre lot. 
Um, with the code amendment that we had about a month ago, this complies with all code standards. Here's some of the elevations and renderings that we have for the site. And I'll ask if you guys have any questions. We've looked at this a few times. Is there any comments? I, I just want to say it's about time this has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Heard about this location for a long time. Yeah. Um, looking forward to this. When, when do you think, when do, you, when do we see this go up? Uh, we're ready. No, it's our building. We just need to get through the, okay. finish up the permit process. Perfect. Um, a fun note, first time in recent history, in fact, if ever we were, awarded a bar license conditionally by the state of Utah last month. Okay. Okay. Perfect. It was clean in there. Yeah, okay. I'll just say it's nice after all this time. And I will. All these compliance. You had time to get it right. No, <laughs> no, it looks great. The, applicant, the building looks great. Following code, appreciate it. Looks I will entertain a motion. I move that we approve uh, business item number two as stated on the agenda. Okay, I have a first from Councilman McComber. I'll second it. Second from Councilwoman Barton, any further discussion? Karn? Aye. Wadman? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Barton? Aye. Comber? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We have the Still Ridge uh, Plaza, lot Thank you. three. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, applicant here. You're welcome to come up. Okay, Steel Ridge Plaza is located at about 369 East Crossroads Boulevard. It's the area shown in, with the red hatch, but the uh, site that you're reviewing the application is outlined in yellow. Uh, this is the proposal. There are several buildings, as you can see. Several of these have drive-throughs, drive, uh, drive -throughs, and, and then this is the proposed landscape plan and the proposed elevations. You'll see on the corner here, it is located within the gateway area and they have uh, proposed a monument and landscaping to meet that requirement along with the flag, um, flag pole, <laughs> not just pole, but you know, like a flag monument. And then it, uh, here, here are the renderings in a colored version. Uh, we did hear from several neighbors and uh, um, most of the council got copied on those emails. The concern was about the grade change along the, uh, it, for this property, it's the back of the property. However, there will be drive-through windows and um, speaker boxes and lights. There was a concern. You can see these two images with the grade change, and then you can also see um, the image on the right was taken uh, by a, a resident in the townhomes abutting this, and their concern was that these drive-throughs will be pointing into their upper story windows. We met on site with the applicant and several of us in the city, at the city, met on site with several of the applicants. And, and then this was the solution that was, that was proposed as a result of that meeting, that the, there would be a four foot retaining wall next to the existing fence, and then the grade would slope up, and then there would be a fence at the top of the slope to address that they didn't have to be concerned with those headlights and, and, and hopefully that will help block noise as well. Uh, we, we did hear from about seven residents. We had some at the planning commission as well. So just want to let you know there was public feedback on this. Okay. And then, yeah. are, we talking about, are we talking about two fences? Yes. We are, yes. What's between the two fences though? The, it's a slope with landscaping on it. Who maintains it? The uh, commercial property owner. It's all the tumbleweed, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a good solution and not a good solution all at the same time. Uh, I don't. I don't like that dead space between the two fences. It's a place for mischief. Mischief and garbage. <laughs> yeah. Man, what did you do as a kid? <laughs> I would love it as a teenager. Yeah. There will be access to the area. It is quite a long area. There will be access from both ends. So it's not necessarily closed off on the ends, but yes, it will need maintenance and that will be the obligation of the commercial property owner. Okay. Okay. I know, it's a, it's a difficult situation. The neighbors will be sure to let us know if there's a problem, so. It, right, right. Well, Sarah, well, sorry, what was there during the public, during the planning commission, what was the sentiment there? Was it varied? <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they <clears throat> don't love the grade change, of course. Um, it, they were concerned that there would not be a fence screening that um, they were concerned. So originally the upper fence was not proposed. Okay. 
Uh, so their concern was that that upper fence was not proposed and that those headlights would be in their windows. So how high is that top of that upper fence from the grade today? It's, give or take. yeah, I think it will be about six feet. From the, from, if you go back to this, okay, from where the orange roller is, is that where the existing grade is going to be? Because it looks like it drops off before the fence. So well, the, the drop off that you're seeing is the sloped area here. So what you're, what you're seeing here, um, so the image on the left is the existing fence. And so they're proposing a four foot retaining wall and then slope up to the oh. top of the dirt that you're seeing there. Okay. So I, I flipped it in my head. I, I'm with you. So probably 10 feet from the. So, so the new fence will be on the left hand picture. It'll be on the right hand side of that left hand picture. Yeah. Sir, yes. sir, was it ever considered to have it so that they can remove the fence and then that way they just have more space between their townhome? And then they have this, they can see the retaining wall, the landscaping they wouldn't have to maintain. There, then there's a fence. And so, because I just am not a big fan of double fencing. We've been here, how many years? I mean, I've, I've talked about this, where it just would open it up and it would create a much more appealing feel for the residents um, to not have that fence and then another fence. Right. And, th and that would really be up to the, certainly yeah, can remove their fence if they choose to. Yeah. But the they but the applicant wouldn't have a problem if that fence was removed and the residents were if, if kids were on that area that wouldn't be a concern. Okay. No, I don't think that'd be an so issue. So the retaining wall still be there. Just the retaining wall and then the fence above and then okay. then they'd have. I'm just saying the lower fence better. have that. So maybe just let the HOA know that the applicant is okay. This I'm I'm one of five, but I would be okay that we wouldn't have that double fencing. It also would put eyes on the space, Chris, to your concern? Yeah. So then the eyes of all the residents, they could see, and it's good for you too, because you don't want people tagging your fence, you don't want people, whatever might happen, because you wouldn't have as many eyes on that space. So I just think that potentially that would be a great opportunity, talking to the HOA. Um, and there's even a chance that maybe the applicant could even buy the fence and move it, <laughs> because it's the same height that they would have. Um, and they could just put in new posts and then they'd be able to um, compensate the HOA for some of that. I'm just a compromiser guy. So just trying to figure out a way we can make this more appealing for everyone involved. Do you have anything you want to add before I entertain a motion? No, just so originally, um, this uh, drawing that's up there, the, the original design in, in the first picture where it is cut low right now, um, all that was going to be down lower, which kind of would have actually created more of a, like a, a trap area for tumbleweeds and, and that sort of thing. So we actually felt by raising that, it, it, it did twofold, right? It, it eliminated some of that where it was down in this pit where nobody could really see what's going on, um, as well as hide some of that, um, the light coming in that they, were, that they were really concerned about. And the retaining wall will re uh, prevent erosion as well. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. I, I do want to make a quick comment. I, I, from the images we've seen, I think this captures the gateway overlay, what we are hoping with that monument. I think that's going to be a really nice addition right when you're coming into Saratoga Springs, oh. right there on Crossroads. I think that that's a great addition. Um, do you have tenants signed yet that you can talk about, or is that still NDA? Um, we do, not in all the buildings. Um, there are a total, if we go back to the, uh, there, uh, can you go to the one before? I believe um, the upper left there, building one is completely filled. Building nine and eight are about 80% full. Um, then we have a few uh, other tenants. Um, in, in some of the other buildings. As far as six and seven, which is the mon to the monument, um, we don't, we're, we're talking with a few people right now. Okay. Is that the answer to what you needed? Yeah. Just also no names of businesses if you Any can. names that you can actually <laughs> announce that are coming. Um, I mean, people always want to hear that, so. I don't, uh, if, you, if you're not then comfortable he can go doing to it, you don't have to. tell everyone that's Because everybody oh, has Yeah, so there, I mean, I, uh, there's a burn boot camp. Um, there's, uh, there's a taco restaurant coming in there. Yes. There's some, some med spa. Um, uh, I think a Vietnamese restaurant. 
and just a few others that were okay. those off the top of my great. head. Great, yeah. some great. Yeah. thank you. I do have a question on the um, monument. I I was meant to ask this earlier. Um, with the flagpole, are you planning on just having the U.S. flag? Are you going to do multiple poles so that the city flag can be there? Because it is sort of entering the city. I saw that you had the name of your development, which is fine, on the sign. But there's nothing really saying you're coming to Saratoga Springs. And so I would love it if we could have the Saratoga Springs flag. Got our logo on it. With our logo on it. But I don't see it. Oh, on don't, the ground. If you go to that side elevation. I didn't see it. I, we're really open to anything the on that. The bottom piece, Saratoga Springs. Oh, yeah, that's great. The Saratoga, Saratoga logo. Springs is the logo. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you could put a, our flag, that'd be fun, too. Just, it's, yeah. it really is the gateway to the community. Yeah. Um, and we appreciate the effort that you're making and, and really stepping up there. Um, I, again, I think that overall, you're doing the best you can in this the topographical situation yeah. you have. And I really appreciate you working with the residents and hopefully we'll continue to be able to evolve this so that it just becomes really just an amazing thing for everyone. We did actually talk with a few of the residents that were here uh, from Planning Commission and had a good discussion with them and they were grateful and so, yeah. That was my quick question too, is the, the city's not requiring the requiring the retaining wall in that area. They're just doing it because the residents, concern, was that their concern? And or? their erosion. Like, do they have to put that in? So for let me the, go back to that. The original plan, sorry, the original plan had the retaining wall where you're seeing the dirt. And right? so they're, in order to help address all of the concerns, they brought the retaining wall closer to the fence and then made the slope rather than it just being a straight retaining right. wall here okay. and a deeper corridor that nobody can see. Like a tunnel, basically. Yeah, right. that's, okay, that, yeah. So that's why we moved it back. Was this, how was the residents' feedback, like positive, like this was a good fix for them, like they were okay with? I haven't heard from anybody since planning commission okay. and that's usually a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've thank been doing you. this a while too. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciated about a year ago, I think we walked the property and looked at that corner where you did the monument because part of that was city owned and partnership to shift that out there. Yeah. So th yeah, thank you. Okay, I will entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve business item three, including all staff findings and conditions. I'll second. Have a first from Councilman Wilden, second from Councilman McComber. Any further discussion? Wadman? Aye. Karn? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Comber? Aye. Barton? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We got business item four. Thank you. Thank you. The Cliff Lake Master Development Agreement. And this is a big project, so this will be a little bit longer of a discussion. It's quite a large project covering three zones. There's mixed residential, heavy commercial, regional commercial, and this proposal is for a master development agreement and a neighborhood plan. And there's quite a bit of details in all of those and some requests for your consideration. Uh, this is a summary of the proposal and an image of the site. They, it is approximately 124 acres. And then the request is for 8.25 units per acre. And we'll get into that density request a little bit further into the presentation. Here's a closer image of what's being proposed in regards to zoning. Or the zoning has already been approved. You're seeing mixed residential outlined in red, regional commercial outlined in blue, and then heavy commercial outlined in green. And then these are some details that are included in the master development agreement. The developer will be required to complete Flotsam Way, which is on the south end of the project. And then the developer will also be required to pay for the relocation of an 18 inch drinking water line. They will be required to convey drinking water from well number six. And there's some details related to that. And then they will be required to upsize improvements per the capital facilities plan, impact fee facilities plans, and master plans. That's standard language for development. And then uh, the developer shall comply with the architectural design requirements specified in the neighborhood plan. There's uh, several details related to that. They are requesting flat roofs for the senior apartments. And then there's an image of their proposed elevations in the packet. Um, it does, even though it's flat, the, the um, roof line does vary. So that is up for your consideration. And then density, the, the base density in this zone is eight units per acre. The applicant is requesting an, an increase of 0 0.25 units per acre. There is a provision in this zone that allows an increase of up to two units per acre if the property is adjacent a future or existing transit stop or corridor and opportunities are provided 
in the plan for commercial uses that support transit. So there is a proposed stop. However, um, we haven't heard anything from UTA. We don't have a dedicated bus line in that particular location. Um, UTA is slow to serve our area, so even if we proposed one here, which um, from a staff perspective, this may not be the preferred location for a, a bus route. Uh, so that is up for your consideration on the density. And here's an image of where that bus stop is proposed by the applicant. Um, there's also another topic. Staff proposes a buffer between the um, commercial zones and the residential zones. Our code does require items related to buffering, however, if um, council would propose or suggest anything in addition to the code, now would be the time, as we, we can't ask for anything in addition to the code later, but we can now. So what our code does require right now is that loading areas are screened by a wall and vegetation, and then we also require 10 feet around the perimeter of parking lots. So if it, that's just for your consideration. If um, the applicant feels that that's adequate, so their proposal is that they meet code. There are some reduced setbacks being proposed. There is a fourplex uh, senior living type unit, and they and in order to accommodate that layout and design, they are proposing, sorry, requesting a reduction of the front and street side yard setback from 20 feet to 15 feet. And then they do have an alley loaded product shown, and to accommodate that alley loaded product, they are proposing a rear yard setback from 20 feet to 10 and a half feet. Okay. However, they, they will still have full driveways. That request is more specific to where they're identifying the edges of the alley. Sorry, and, can you clarify that? So the yes. driveways are still going to be able to hold a car? Right. They will still be 20 foot driveways. Right. The reduction is, is just their width of their alley? Can you answer that? I think we, they could probably answer that a little better than I could. So you'll see the image on the right here is showing the private alley. And then the line that's halfway down the driveways would be the alley width. So some of the driveway is in the alley right of way. And I'm not sure so the exact. you don't really have a 20 I'm not, Oh, I think the re need for that is the easements. Is that the need? What's the reason for, the, for this? They, they'll, have to, well, <laughs> they'll have to answer that. I don't know if you have the cross-section page in your packet, but in the cross-sections, it's sort of a custom cross-section where you have the full drive widths, but there's not really a need for like a sidewalk or a park strip because it's just to access the units. So the driveways come into this sort of cross-section, and then there's like a private right-of-way line, technically that's a 45-foot private right-of-way line and then that setback is from that. But the driveways are a minimum of 20 feet deep, two car driveways wide. So the driveway is 20 feet and then the drive, driving parkway, if you would, the road is, the asphalt is, is not being reduced. You can still have the two, it's this, there's no sidewalks, curbing and all that. Correct, so it's a full drive uh, with uh, 12 foot travel lanes plus a two foot gutter, uh, valley gutter in the center. So full drive lanes. But since we don't have the sidewalks or the um, standard high back curb and gutter or park strips, we just extended the driveways into the this private cross section. And the reduction in the the cross the setback is to is the sidewalk and all that. It's it's to bring the building more forward because if we were to have the standard 15 or 20, then the driveways would be very long, right? So the reduction is in the setback from the private right of way long, bring the buildings closer so that the driveways are more an appropriate length, which is 20 feet. So Mayor Council, um, and this question is really for Jeremy. In the past, when we've dealt with shrinking the uh, front yard setbacks, we've had problems with Rocky Mountain Power and, and Questar Gas. Uh, or Dominion or whatever they call themselves these days, um, because they require certain setbacks for between their utilities. Is staff's um, belief that this would work if these cross sections or if these setbacks were allowed, would it enable them to meet all of those things being put in their appropriate utility easement corridors? The, the conversations we've had so. Primarily have been with Dominion Gas, who need to be 10 feet away from buildings. So when the setbacks are less than 20 feet, if the gas is near the back of the PUE, 
and there's less than 10 feet from that TP to the building, then they're not 10 feet away. So when the setbacks, and we have other projects in the city that have 15 foot setbacks from the back of walk, and that's been the issue where the gas has felt concerned that they're, you know, if they don't get there first and the power or something's there and they, and they end up going in the back of the PUE, then they're no longer 10 buildings. So their preference would be all city setbacks are 20 feet, but the staff doesn't support that because obviously we have lots of projects that are less than 20 foot setbacks, uh, 15, and a lot of other cities have 15 foot setbacks too, but, it, but Dominion is concerned about setbacks less than 20 feet. And, and I, I asked that question specifically because we are experiencing this where we are changing those front setbacks because, again, unless the, the gas company gets in first, it causes these trickle-down problems and, and concerns with spacing to the, the structure. And I believe the code is to the structure, which would include porches and things of that nature. Is that correct? The 10-foot? No, not necessarily. Um, there are some exceptions where things can encroach five feet. So we do have some situations where a, a porch can go five feet into that. Okay. I guess I might, I, I don't know why we put it to 10 feet. Like what, what would be the advantage besides, a, I mean, might not have a longer driveway. I guess I'm not sure exactly what the advantage, I guess, to you guys is to make that smaller. If we already know there could be issues. So, I mean, we're not expecting any issues with how we've got these things laid out, but is what it would do is it'd make the parks smaller in between the uh, quads of homes. So you'd end up losing, you know, 20 feet wide worth of park for the kids to play in. It's the grass area in front. Gets so the, f so why would we want to sorry, no, can I see your cross section? More I'm, oh, in the and I'm not aware of any setbacks less than 15 feet. So 15 right. feet does give them some buffer, but if the setback was other way. 10 feet, Okay. Then the gas company, even if they were in the front of the PUE, you know, probably would be have a trouble meeting the 10-foot setback. So I, I can't speak for the gas company, but 15 feet gives them a 5-foot buffer. A 10-foot setback gives them basically zero buffer, right? Because you're not, you can't install a gas line on the edge of the sidewalk. So no matter what you do, you're already one or two feet off the back of a walk. So which means if the setback's 10 feet, then there's nowhere in the PUE really where you can reasonably be 10 feet off a building. So, I so there should be 15. Though. Yeah, so I got on the one on the left. I understand that 12 to 15 feet that gives us plenty, but the one on the right, 10 and a half feet. So, no utilities, no right of ways. We're not concerned about anything at that 10 and a half feet. We're not concerned with anything right there okay. with us. I mean, we, we technically have 20 feet there to be able to work with it, just with how the cross sections are drawn up. It gives a, a 10 and a half foot setback with that. We're proposing that goes from 20 to 10 and a half, right? Is that what I'm reading up there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We want a half. Yeah. But the utilities could go anywhere from the asphalt to the edge of the PUE. I mean, okay. it's in a... With that, I mean, essentially the entire front and side yard is the utility easement. Jeremy, would that be in its standard location? The utility companies would go in the PUE. Now, this exhibit designates the PUE being there. I think the applicant was suggesting that they would then change the PUE to be the entire road. We would not want to have our utilities overlapping a PUE, right? If we had to go <coughs> maintain a sewer or water line and I had a gas line on top of me and a comm, that would be a disaster for maintenance. So I, I don't know as far as whether they can change the location of the PUE, but they, we certainly wouldn't, you know, there's a, you can only fit so many potatoes in the bag, right? Like. We need space for our utilities and sewer and water, and maybe there's a way that the streets that have the 10-foot setback don't have any gas lines. I don't, you know, I haven't, we haven't evaluated all these options, and, and that wouldn't even be the city who would evaluate that. So certainly if there was a 10-foot setback, I would assume that they would have to find a way to get gas to these utilities without using those right-of-ways, probably. And if that's possible, I don't, I don't know. We certainly would not be okay with a PUE being on top of our utilities, because that would make future maintenance of our facilities extremely difficult if I had gas lines and telephone lines and on top of our lines when we're trying to, you know, access them, so. That's not the same. That may be a question to ask the applicant right now. Are you planning on those city utilities being completely outside of these PUEs? Because to prove a neighborhood plan right now, it seems to set you up for possible conflict with the city. The city would not accept that we can't have our city utilities in the PUEs. So I'm assuming you mean culinary, pressure irrigation, storm drain sewer. Um, 
we would prefer those to be in the asphalt. That's where we've designed them and staff has indicated that we don't even necessarily need the PI or the culinary down these alleyways as they could be serviced from closer to the public streets. Yeah. So Jeremy, most of their streets will meet the public cross section. Um, there's a there's some private streets, but the majority of the streets are public streets, and that's where and we put those city utilities in the in the public right of way. So again, I'm just trying to clarify: any public utilities for the city will be in public rights of ways and not on the private cross sections. Jeremy's right. shaking his head. There would be some utilities within the private right-of-ways. Um, right. Yes. So <laughs> we also allow them in private streets. So we do allow them in private streets. They, they won't be in the alleys. They'll be where they're supposed to be. Right. Yes. But, they, they match our approved cross-section. Thank you. It's just kind of a circular based on the applicant's proposal that if there was not enough room in the PUEs that are shown, they could go in the asphalt. And we were just waiting why that could be problematic. So if our, oh, if our yeah, utilities are in the thought, asphalt... Oh, the applicant was saying the PUEs would be in the, these private alleyways. Right. It would, so that would be a, a potential conflict right. where we would not allow the city utility in those private alleyways. Right. So to clarify, I, did, I didn't mean that the gas could go into the asphalt. I meant it would go up to the asphalt from the edge of the PUE near the building because right. there's all that room in there that the public utilities, the sewer, the storm drain, et cetera, would not be like underneath the driveways. That would be... They, I mean, we wouldn't do that. At, at ten and a half feet, isn't that the entire PUE though? Is their, their yard is all. Ten and a half is the rear yard setback, correct? And it's ten feet on the PUE. What's that? It's fifteen foot front yard. Is it? 15, uh, no, on one of the products, they want to take it from twenty down to ten and a half. But ten feet. These are rear load townhomes, so the front, front yard is faces the park. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, the, that kind of showed the diagram here. Um, right, so there are alleys, um, and it's hard to point here, but the, the, two, the, the townhome areas that's, that's kind of in the middle of the page here, those would be accessed by alleys, and then they front green spaces. So they access their house by the alleyways, and the, front, the garage is in the back? Right. And then the front yard is towards screen space. Right. Correct. So, so to summarize, the 10 and a half foot setback on the front could be a problem for Questar Dominion. I don't know. It well, the 10 and a half is on the alley. <laughs> well, OK. Yeah. The so front. the whole point of it is, is if you have the reduction in the setback in the back, then it allows you to have the buildings a little bit further apart, and there's more grass between the two. Correct. Correct. So that's the benefit to the residents, which we, we look at. The negative is, is and so I just, I'm just trying to get my head around this decision. So the city's easements are going to be on our public right-of-ways. If there is a problem with the with Questar gas or and electrical, you will not be using the public easement to interfere with our utilities, or you potentially can. I think it'll be in the. Well, the city won't let them. Yeah, we won't. Be. Yeah, the city won't. City allow standard it. doesn't allow that. So, we, so what Jeremy's saying, this conflict, this concern, will not happen. It shouldn't. It should we, we don't know that, right? Is that the whole thing? Here? Well, we don't know. They won't have natural gas. If it doesn't. The work. concern has to do with the the gas and the and the power. Which we don't have designs for. Yeah. Right. We don't have designs for, but I I don't want to. I, and I'm not. To, and I'm not trying to be rude here, but the sob story coming in. And the council is going, oh, okay, we feel bad. You can do this because you put all this money into it. I don't want that happening again here. Jeremy's brought it to our concern that this is not a possibility. I do not want us coming back six months. And you're like, well, we tried and we just can't find anywhere else. And the residents aren't going to have natural gas now. And then we look like the bad guys. So this is a real concern for me in terms of that. In terms of the flat roofs on the, as long as there's, I don't understand why anyone in Utah would want a flat roof because drainage is a nightmare. Even, like, even just a slight slope makes sense to me. But as long as it doesn't look like it from the outside, the elevations, then I'm okay with that. Um, and then I'm not in favor of the density in, increase no. because there's no way of knowing the future of the transportation. 
There's one more request, and it's related to parking. Oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry. No. You're, so the applicant, <laughs> um, you were forwarded a parking study yesterday, I believe, and uh, their request uh, for senior for senior apartments. So they do have um, townhomes. They have fourplexes, and then they also have a senior apartment complex. And their request for that area is 1.25 stalls per unit for one bedroom, and 2.25 stalls per unit for two bedroom. We did make some code changes last year, so they. Code is. Um, That's where the code is. That's our current code. That's our current code. No, we don't have a. We don't have a code oh, for senior housing well, park for the senior apartments. So this is what you guys put in your report. Regular apartments. So we're, okay. we're asking 1.25 <laughs> units per unit. Oh, okay. So for the entire senior apartment, you're asking for 1.25 stalls per bedroom. Per unit. Unit? Or one bedroom unit. No, oh, it's, it, an apart bedroom, it's an apartment or it's a bedrooms? It's per apartment unit. Okay. So if it is a two bedroom unit, they want 1.25 stalls, right? What you're saying? Right. Oh, 2.25 no, stalls. No, no, no. no, no. I apologize. I'm confused about what the ask is. So um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple things they're asking for. I'll let them speak to that. Um, but let me go into the additional request, and then they, they can speak to what they're asking for for the senior apartment. Uh, our current code requires guest stalls to be no more than 200 feet from the units. And the, and um, so the, the applicant's request is... When they got their rezone, which was about two years ago, um, the code was different, and we changed our parking code about a year ago. And their request is, and, and the two things we added in our code about a year ago was that your guest parking has to be within 200 feet, and that your driveways don't count as guest parking, and and that has caused some concern for the applicant. So they are requesting consideration of of um, the previous code, and then they're requesting. Um, I'll let you lead into what you're requesting for the senior apartments. I don't think I fully understood. All right, so I've just gotta, I'll, I'll just kind of go over everything here that we've kind of been talking about just so we can all be on the same page and everything and go from the top. And, you know, it's been about two years ago since we were here last, and we've been, you know, we, when we started designing this project, we weren't looking at densities and things like that. We were just trying to look at making a product that looked really nice and that would be really well accepted by the city and the residents around there. So we designed this whole community as kind of a park theme community. And as you can see, each of those units around the townhouses all have big parks inside the middle and that will all have playground equipment, you know, swing sets, slides, just a lot of amenities for the families to play with. And that's kind of where, you know, the setbacks and things like that came into play, but I'll, we'll get that, that later. So we designed the whole area we started this, you know, two years ago, and parking was a little bit different. And so, when we got it all designed, we ended up with 717 units. That ended up being 8.25 units per acre. We tried to look and see, you know, what could be cut to make it look good, and what would, you know, just different things that would be able to change it. And then we found out in the code that there was an exception to, to ask for more density. You can go up by two units per acre, so you could, or two units, yeah, per acre. So you could go from eight to ten up to twelve. <laughs> So the neighborhood plan does allow for 12 per acre um, if you meet certain different requirements. But one of the requirements that we feel we, we do meet is, it was stated on the, the code up there, it says an increase of up to two units uh, if the property is adjacent to a future or existing transit stop or corridor and opportunities are provided for commercial. So we are next to a corridor and it sounds like it's possibly going to become a larger corridor here in the future. And we do have commercial opportunities in this development of ours. So we do feel that we do meet both those requirements of having, you know, being next to a corridor and having commercial opportunities for transit. And we are also, you know, trying to get with UDOT to propose a bus zone, but that's not necessarily required to have that there. That's just something we're trying to do for convenience because UTA has suggested that they do want to trying to figure out something along 2300 West, uh, going up and down through the area here. So we've, we've presented it to them. They've been accepted to it, but with how UTA works, it's something that they can't make a, a determination on you know, quickly or anything like that, but that has been brought forward to them. So that's, that's why we're asking for just the, the extra 0.25 units per acre. We're not looking for a full two units per acre. We're just trying to make this community be able to fit as we have it designed. Uh, because we do feel it is a good layout and it does work for everything. When it 
comes to the apartment, the senior apartment, we are asking for a flat roof with parapets. About two years ago, I think a good chunk of the city council went and uh, toured our apartment in Pleasant Grove, Grove Crest Villas. Um, when we had a rezone meeting that day, I think most everybody said, wow, that was not what we were expecting. That was a nice building. That is something we do think we would like here in the city, and that had a flat roof on it, and we went over that quite frequently, you know, quite a bit, you know, saying that's, that's how a nice, tall apartment store building should look because you can have all of your condensing units for ACs up. You don't have to have all that equipment down in front of the building and making it nice or for the building. So, you know, from your guys' comments two years ago, we felt that we were good to move forward with, you know, presenting that apartment, presenting it with a flat roof. Um, Planning Commission was all in favor of that as well. They thought it was a great idea and it would look good. And they also didn't want to see condensers on the front of the building and sides of the building. So, so they were all in favor of that. So that's the other thing. Um, when it does come to apartment or to, to parking stalls, we did have Hells Engineering do a parking study for us, and they did say that 1.25 um, stalls per unit was sufficient. Uh, we have you know, gone through and looked at our other apartment that we have in Pleasant Grove. That one has 1.25 stalls per unit as well. And that one is never full. There's always open spaces there, and it's got pretty much the same mix of uh, one, one room and two bedroom apartment or bedrooms there. So we are very confident that the 1.25 parking density is sufficient for there, and that is one thing that can be requested in the neighborhood plan to be, be accepted by the city council. Um, the other thing with parking is with the new code, it says that you know parking has to be within 200 feet of each home. That just makes for our community having basically a parking stall in front of every single unit, um, especially in the senior community. And it would just, it, it kind of looks bad if you have one stall in front of one building in the next stall. I mean, it, it just kind of breaks up the landscape and makes it look pretty horrible. So we've clustered our parking. We found that, you know, all of our parking, we do have meet the 0.25 requirement, but 92 of our homes are not within that 200 feet. Um, so that is why we're proposing this change so that we can have all of our parking clusters instead of, you know, basically one in front of every building to meet that 0.25 uh, per home. And let's see. Make sure I've hit all of my talking points here. And then when it does come to the setbacks, so in the senior community, the, the code basically reads that the city has a front, rear, and side setbacks. With our senior community, we have internal setbacks and external set setbacks. So our external setbacks are what's along the, uh, the roads, so that would be the 20 feet. The interior setbacks are what's inside of our, uh, I guess, what would you call that? The so like the private roads have the interior setback, and then the exterior is the public lazarette lane and promenade way and the plat boundary, essentially. Yeah. So. So all of our, when we're asking for 15 feet on our senior community, that's basically in between the buildings um, for those setbacks. But all of the exterior roads, um, they will be met with a 20-foot setback. It's just with how those buildings are built, there's no rear setbacks because there are no rears to them. And you basically have fronts and sides. And so we just basically want to classify them how they are. And it's the same setbacks that we have in the community that we built across the street from uh, Patriot Park. So it's the, the same layout, the same type of setbacks, everything in that senior community for setbacks is the same that we're proposing here for these setbacks, so that's. I would, can I ask a question on that? Yes. So you brought up Leisure Villas, and we've gotten several communications from the residents of Leisure Villas that they don't have enough guest parking. Now, over They need more guest parking. It's seniors, and, they, and they've got family coming for holidays. And throughout the year, they don't have enough parking. So that community is the only community I've heard of that's ever had that problem. In Vineyard, the city looks to our community as a standard for parking because we have ample parking. We've never had any issues there. And um, I do know in that community, after we left and they took over, they did change their parking requirements. All of our streets are local streets, which do allow for parking on the street, per your guys' city code. Um, 
they changed it for that HOA. They do not allow parking there. Well, if they're public streets, they can't, the HOA can't say people can't park there. That's just what they've told me, so I don't, I don't know. Are they public streets in Leisure Villas? There are some. That, that's a conversation all over, though, the HOA compared to city code on the park, street parking. So they've, they've, I can't speak to Vineyard. We don't live in Vineyard, and I don't hear from their residents. I'm just telling you, though, these residents here said we don't have enough parking. And they, they've restricted their parking after we left. On they, private roads, which the they can private do. private roads internal to the, the, you know, the Leisure Villas type product, and then on the perimeter, it's public roads. It's the same asphalt width, though, as a local road. On the, so. Your private road is the same cross-section? Yes. yes. Well, yeah. The, the width, the asphalt width. Yes, correct. Not asphalt the sidewalk width. and curb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so our roads are as big as the, the local roads in there. So, you know, during Christmas, during, you know, Mother's Day, they're, you know, if somebody has to park on the road for, you know, a visit, there's ample. But, I mean, we have, you know, we got 20-foot yeah. driveways there. You can park two cars in the driveways. You can park two in the garage. There's... You know, let's see, there's quite a few parking stalls throughout the community there. I actually think we have more parking here than we do over at the uh, one across from Patriot Park. And then over at the clubhouse, there's quite a bit of parking there, too. So, yeah, it's probably unfair to say Christmas and Mother's Day. It's probably more fair to say every Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Depending on. For, for, you know, for the, the consumer for this product. Yeah. Right. Okay. That, that is the first community. I mean, we've built 20 communities. That's the first one that's ever expressed anything when it comes to parking, so. Okay. Uh, I, I think the cross-section is, I mean, it's, Peter uh, Villas was 26 feet back then, and what what are you doing here? Looks like it's 29. 29. So it has a little more width of asphalt. Hmm. Yeah, so. Sarah, do you have a list of all the different requests? I, I do. Well, I have. Sorry, this. I do. I, <laughs> which the, slide is it? Just a second. Be in the findings condition for that. Um. You wave a fan in. What well, was that about the trash enclosure? <coughs> is there a problem with that? No, oh no, that was not. That was that was the setbacks. Okay. Um, I thought I had the list, but it it's flat roofs on the senior apartments. It's setbacks uh, for two unit types. So the the setbacks. Um, fifteen and then ten and a half. Right. Right. So twenty feet to fifteen feet for the senior living fourplex units, and then for the alley-loaded townhomes, the rear setback from 20 feet to 10 and a half feet. So on the fourplexes, it's the front and street side from 50, or 20 feet to 15 feet. And then the density increase from 8 to 8.25, and uh, the parking... How many units does that add over the whole project? What's that? How many units does that add over the whole project? 717. That? No, but the, the two, point, point two five, five is like it adds that's like, good math. Yeah, it adds like twenty. Was it twenty three or twenty four sure. units? I'm not gonna give it to me. About twenty three units. Yeah, it was. I believe it was somewhere around there. I don't know the answer. Sorry. Within um, one or two of twenty three, <laughs> either way. And then the um, parking reduction related to senior apartments right. and location of guest stalls and allowed to count some of the driveways towards guest parking and we do have enough guest parking per the code it's just we also suggested that our driveways are big enough to add extra guest parking because they are all 20 feet long so and there's the width for so two large you vehicles meet the guest parking requirement without the driveways the calculation yes. yeah i think the calculation's like what was it 0. 0.25 0. 0.25 it, or so 0. the it, driveway would if you're just trying to use the, what you're saying is i think the driveway would meet that 200 foot requirement because mm -hmm. the driveway you yes. literally would open up the drive the door and you'd walk right in. Correct. So you're trying to get around that 200 feet maybe with the driveways, but you have enough guest stalls. Yes, we per have code. Just we have not that enough, close to each unit. Yeah, right? we have enough guest stalls per code. We just have 90 
even two, it's, yeah, nine, we have 92 units that are further than 200 away from a parking stall if you don't count the driveway. But yeah, even excluding the driveways, we okay exceed the minimum. So. so is that all of them then? That's Four, them. right? So I'll go ahead and you finish if I don't mind because I'm yeah. not going to make a motion. I'm just going to go through and get my comments okay. here. So the flat roofs with the cool design and shielding and stuff, I'm fine as long as it doesn't look like a flat roof from the elevation. I think it's smart. It hides things. It makes it more beautification of walking the trails and things. Um, setbacks, 20 to 15. I'm okay with that. Um, I actually think maybe we just do 20 to 15 across the board and then maybe we don't have to have this uh, open concern I was pretty concerned about. You heard me earlier. So even on the back loaded townhomes, we go from 20 to 15 instead of 10 and a half. Um, I'm not in favor of the density because there's too many unknowns here. Um, also a concern is, is I get a little frustrated with developers. Not, it's not your fault. Your predecessors do some of this to me too. Is you're asking for increased density and reduced parking. It's like, come on asking for everything and that just really gets me upset. It's like, oh, we want more people coming here, living here and guests coming, but then we also want a reduction in parking. So you're gonna get now, because of that, you're gonna get a little bit of council member McComber. I'm not, I'm not personally, I'm not in favor of an increase in density because there's too much unknown with transportation. I mean, you saw the frustration of the residents. I mean, there's too many things happening in this area to have any kind of what if this potentially will come. Um, in terms of the parking, the 200 feet, I'm okay with that personally because I do agree that a lot of people will just park on the driveway, open the garage door, and walk right in. So you're meeting the requirement even though it's not within 200 feet. So I'm okay with that. Um, but then there was a reduction in parking for the senior because of the units. Again, this is a concern. Council Member Karn brought it up. People were already having a way. We hope that people will come to visit their loved ones. And I think maybe in Saratoga Springs, we're unique. We actually visit our loved ones. Um, I'm uncomfortable maybe with as big of a reduction as you're asking. I could potentially be open to hearing my fellow council members if they're okay with a, a, some reduction in the parking for the senior living and, area, the senior apartments. And the senior apartment is a different demographic than the senior, the other senior community. Yep. So. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm open to some reduction. I just think that you asked for too much, in my personal opinion. Um, and so I think I covered them all. There is one more. I apologize. Oh. Um, they have done a soil study in this area, and their concern is with evergreen trees being able to survive. And so they're requesting that that requirement, um, that they not be required to have evergreen trees, that they be allowed to replace that count with deciduous. So that's all that's of the requests. Fine. I'm going to sit down to let you uh, Evergreens do have a, they do have a, a tough time out here if you know how to take care of them. It, I mean, they're very successful. My, the neighborhood that Chris Karn and I live in have beautiful pine trees because you have to give them the right nutrients. But I'm personally not going to have, I'm not going to stop a development over trees. Um, it's nice in the winter to have a tree that's not just twig. Mm -hmm. That's why. So you can maybe accomplish that with some um, bushes that keep leaves throughout the winter so that it doesn't just look like a dead oasis. Um, but I'm going to leave that to you. I'm not even going to put any kind of requirement around that. I'm okay with the tree situation. So yeah. I'm done with my areas. I'll move it back time back to you, Mayor. Council on the Con or Karn. Well, I know that wasn't a motion. It wasn't but a motion. I, I was just going to. I know, oh. but I'm seconding everything you just said. <laughs> okay. I, I, we are on the same page. Across the board, and when we're on the same page, that's a bit because we we butted heads before. Yeah, we're actually pretty good. yeah. Well, I think I think we're on the same page here. I think Michael's and, one. And, and, you know, and I did tour the facility in, what, in Pleasant Grove. What kind of are you thinking? Maybe on the parking for the apartments? Uh, is this almost half? Yeah, I, I've. I mean, I toured the other apartments. I understand who the consumer is there, and I I'm, I can. I don't know where I'm at on what kind of reduction, but I can get there. So. And like I said, we did have a professional company do the survey for us. I mean, Hell's Engineering did the parking uh, study for us. So it was a third party group. They agreed that 1.25 is sufficient. Um, they actually said it's more than sufficient for parking. And, you know, they oh, went through and- 1.25 for a one bedroom unit. No, for, unit for, for everything. All units. 
1.25 for all units. Yeah, and, and 1.25 per, per unit. It's yeah. two or more. Right. Or more. Okay. And we've found, you know, even if it's a two-bedroom <clears throat> apartment, usually they're just renting that for so they have more space. It's not because they have an extra person in there. It's because they want to have an office area or they want to have a different area. So, <laughs> so they don't. The illegal so grant up in there. Well, they, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and that number was, you know, we can just make up that number. That's well, come from other. And if we would do the sure. study, it'd be amazing if we hired the engineering firm. The it study might be would different. Come back a I was just going to say that. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. Say, we've done them before. Hells, hells tends to go in favor of the uh, applicant. The right, right. Can I ask? Yeah. Yeah. Staff has yeah. only staff has only had that for a few days. If the right. it's turned yeah. in on Friday, I think there's somewhere we so can we be haven't in the middle. reviewed that so at all. I would be okay in this brief. Well, Kevin, I'm not sure if we can delegate this, and if we do make a motion that we we let staff work with developer and find a balance that we feel like would work between the 2.25 is I think what it is right to 1.25 I mean any number I throw out there I'm so, just throwing. I don't I'm just I don't want to throw a number out but that's yeah. fine yeah so to delegate we don't you can't delegate a legislative decision you can delegate an administrative decision I don't believe this would be administrative I believe this is legislative so and if, but but if you do if if you do, you you could you could theoretically do it, but you'd have to be very specific and give us very specific criteria. This is exactly what we're looking for. So, but. Sarah, what is the current code for an apartment complex per room? It depends on the bedrooms. So, a one bedroom is the one point two five, and then let me pull it up exactly so I don't misquote. Um, so. I'm right yeah, there, we're just mm -hmm. on, is, yeah, it, because it's by bedroom, but but I have it right here. I'm just getting to it. So I'll just I'll just throw my comments out there since we're waiting for a second. Um, I'll just throw what these guys were saying. I am against the higher density for sure. I'd like to come to an agreement about parking. Um, definitely not the 10 feet. I think Jeremy is really good at his job, and I feel like if we don't listen, then that's on us, and it will come back to probably. Uh, it'll be an issue when it comes back. So exactly the same things uh, that the other council members were saying, but no higher density, let's figure out the parking. And then I'm not willing to go as little as 10.5 feet. I think we're just pushing for trouble. So. Yeah, and I just wanna add, when we toured the facility, I think I toured it twice, talked to some residents there. Some of them were one person in a two bedroom apartment because they had their little sewing room because she was telling me about the crafting and knitting, <laughs> all of them. So it's like, I, they're somewhere in the middle that's probably right. Um, because some of those two-bedroom apartments are a hobby room. Yeah, probably or a lot of them. Or yeah. an office. Mm -hmm. Mayor, if I, if I could, the only concern that, that I would just introduce is that by reducing the standard, you may be creating a precedence for future facilities like this. And so while the assertion is, is that this is not going to be a problem, um, again, we've only had the parking study since Friday, and so from a staff comfort level, that is not something that staff is recommending. Could we make a motion to approve everything with only that item coming back so they can move forward with the rest of the plan? It's your meeting. You can do what you like. I can do what I want. <laughs> Why not? I have no vote. I, and I, I don't think it sets precedent either because it's only something that can be asked for with a neighborhood plan. So yeah. you'd have to come in with a neighborhood plan. And you have to have a certain amount of acreage to be able to do a neighborhood plan. And but still, the, the exception would be made, and then the next Wait, person's going to ask for it. Is there any possibility that this development goes from senior to non-senior? No, no. Deed restricted. Deed restricted. It'd be deed restricted. Yes, okay. both both our senior communities, the for sale product and our the senior. rental one would be deed restricted. They, in our neighborhood. In our neighborhood, yeah. Okay. So our code what is, is the 1.25 for one bedroom and 0.25 for two bedrooms or more. And then um, it, one way to look at it though is we don't necessarily have a code for senior apartments. And, uh, and in, in the case when we don't have a code, you are allowed to make a, a decision. Uh, that what I quoted you was the requirement for multifamily. And so I personally, guys, would be willing to, to give staff time for this. If, if we say it has to be between 1.25 and 2.25, and then that could potentially come back in the future as a code amendment for senior apartments. We've got one more comment by Larry. He's with us in this. Subdivision, but he's also the owner of that Grovecrest Villas. Yeah, I've had the Grovecrest Villas now for about seven years. And before I built, one, I'm a, I'm like you guys. If there's nothing worse in the world than to have something without enough parking, and if it does, your your occupancy goes down, and there's a huge amount of problems. 
before I built, uh, when, when uh, I built that project, I spent a lot of time going to every senior project I could at all times of the day to make sure that I wasn't making a mistake. And, uh, and so far in the seven years we've done, we've, uh, we've never assigned out all of our parking spots yet. So we've always had adequate, adequate parking. The demographic's really weird because we don't really have any kids there. And we, no matter how big the unit is, we, we average less than one and a half people per unit. And we have, a, we have a whole lot of people that don't drive. And so they, they kind of, a, a lot of them have owned homes in the past, and now they can't get out and drive and stuff, so the kids put them in there, or, or, or they decide to move in there just for the <laughs> social life. But we end up with a lot of units that don't have any, that don't need any parking. So the parking so far, is, it's just never been a, it's never been a problem. So that just for, from, the, from seven years. So. And, 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 and we're gonna run this one and manage it by the exact same way. These are going to be similar to your Pleasant Grove, where you've got senior services on the first floor, Correct. air dressers and dry yeah. cleaners or whatever. Yeah, we well, it's a it just morphs into whatever the people when the people move here. Most apartments have a turnover, almost a hundred percent turnover a year. Most of the people we we can I think last year we had like 20, 25 percent turnover was all, and part of them were for health reasons. But typically in this kind of a community, people move in to stay. They don't move in. in they're not moving in and out. And so you get long-term tenants, and it's really a social thing. They've got the, they've got so many clubs going on and card games and everything. We we provide all the areas for to do that. So yeah. it's a huge social thing, and it's it's just kind of a community that. In, I, in I itself. think it's a, so, it's a needed it's a needed space for us. But but, it, but the the parking the parking the one point two five is adequate. We've never run out of parking or anything. So. And if uh, can I and yeah and unfortunately a lot of these people don't get many visitors either. Yeah. You think they they should, but you know it's. I mean, they might pick them up and take them home, but a lot of seniors are really lonely, and that's one of the reasons they move here. If they if their family was visiting them all the time, they'd move in with them. But but it it's kind of the it's kind of a family unto itself. So but we just don't have any problems. Councilman Wilden, I I would just say on this particular one, I know we don't have it in code now. We could later. What I would be comfortable with is approving it somewhere around, hey, follow the code, and in the absence of a senior code, you know, it's the higher standard. But then if we go in and, like, after the staff has had their time, say 1.25 or whatever it is is sufficient, then it defaults to that. Yeah, um, if tonight, aren't they vested under 10? Code. But he says, but we're going to say higher, maybe. And then I would say to whatever the current code is, but then if we go in and, you know, we don't need to hold it up for a year or whatever. It could be whatever the appropriate time frame is. Hey, we're going to go in and adjust this code. We're going to add a parking section specific to this. I know it's got to go to planning commission or whatever. I just... Well, well, but, and they can go to that yeah. new code. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing. But how are they subject to code that we passed? Four months from now. We put it in a condition. So they uh, can, but they can, they can adopt that new lower standard. In the mixed residential zone, you determine it, but it's primarily based on, on the code in effect. But the applicant can request a reduction, and that's part of your legislative discretion. So they don't have to, per, you don't have to per se meet the code. But as far as a future code is concerned, um, I don't know that staff would, could even recommend anything. What I have heard from planning and from Mark is that we haven't had time to assess this traffic study okay. because we just barely got it. So we don't know how to recommend anything at this point. So uh, Councilmember Wilden, your proposal was that we keep it at the current standard, mm -hmm. but we bring forward an amendment to address this code. Mm -hmm. And if it's lower, then they would have the opportunity to request the lower yep. the lower parking standard. But I guess the issue was we don't have a standard for it. We do have a standard right now. It's 2.25. We just don't. So it's not a senior house. We have a 1.5 and a 2.5 for multi. And I know this doesn't fit. And I'm just saying if we adopt that now and then we come in yeah. relatively expeditiously, whatever that means, you know, and say, hey, we think for senior add this section of the code and it's 1.5 or 1.25, whatever it is, then we can go there. Yeah. So, so an option too potentially is, is we can maybe give them a little bit of leeway. Like, you know, Chris, it's shooting in the dark, but we, 
maybe do have a, because we can today, give them a little bit of reduction. And then if the code to Stephen's point comes in even lower, then they can come and request that even lower number. But maybe we give them something to work with now that's a reduction from the 2.25. Yeah, I'm willing to do that because there's some things I'm not willing to do here, so. Right, and then that way we're not going too low yeah. today and then allowing staff like, and everything to work to at, at it yeah. and bring us a like proposal. Bring us a senior and then code. to Stephen's point, then they can come back and say, oh, we want this newer reduction because you've done your work research. Yeah. But the code still stays. So we can, we can actually come in and give them a reduction. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And just for a point, Pleasant Grove's code for senior apartments is 1.25. So other cities have adopted that 1.25. And that may yeah. be what staff comes back with. Yeah. And then it could be what staff comes back with, but it also, I always get frustrated when people talk about other cities because when I'm in Pleasant Grove, I always find parking is absolutely horrendous. One, it's an old city. It's a much older community and their road sections are smaller and there's different things, but I can never find a parking spot when I'm in Pleasant Grove. <laughs> so. well, can I say, and I'm not picking on the one point. Five. We just had a lot of conversations like this recently, not about parking, but we're like, hey, we want to basically create new code on the fly. And I know we say, hey, it doesn't create a precedent. It does. I mean, not a legal precedent. People will come in and ask for it. Like, I, I know it's not legal, Kevin, but it, it, it rolls out. That's just how it rolls. And so I'm comfortable with doing something and then figuring out, is this what we're comfortable across all the city? Yeah, that's okay. And I, I, I'm guessing we will be, and it'll be able to address your request. I'm just not comfortable saying, hey, let's go this full route without our staff. Okay. Uh, and I haven't completed my online traffic engineering study on Facebook <laughs> today, so. I you don't, don't have any playground, any clubhouse in this? We have a lot of playgrounds. I couldn't see them in there, but. Um, they're on, we have a whole plan in the neighborhood plan detailing out every amenity and. Okay, places. and there's a clubhouse oh, initially. Okay. That comes in the neighborhood plans. Okay, great. I just didn't see it here because this was just the more generic yeah. structure. Great, right, we're going around in a circle on this. We're all going to be qualified to live here before we're done. So let's move. <laughs> I'll entertain them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but can we, all right. before we do that, I, there were a couple other issues too. Uh, so the neighborhood plan doesn't match what the MDA says with respect to flotsam and so if you can add that to your motion that they amend the neighborhood plan and to match the, um, what is it, 6A in the master development agreement. So amend, amend what, sorry? It's just some fine tuning that we Amend the, catch. for Folsom Way? Flotsam, Flotsam, Flotsam or way. Flotsam Way. I don't know how to pronounce it. Well, add a condition. Add a condition that, that it, sorry, the neighborhood plan be amended to match the MDA in, in 6A. And then there was also the issue of the Pioneer Crossing cross section that we adopted that that may impact the northwest corner of their property. That they would have to uh, match the city's adopted transportation master plan and and preserve that right away. It's just a very small corner of their property. Okay, you keep me honest, Kevin. That's Ready? it. That's it. There was one more thing when it comes to the conditions and stuff. So in the engineering packet, we just want to clarify a few things. So condition nine, we just want to make sure that it, it's talking about a 15 inch sewer and we want to just make sure that it's clarifying that we're responsible for our portion and not the upside because uh, it, it wasn't clear in that statement there. Well, the and, and in response to that, the MDA makes that very clear. It okay. says project, your, your responsibility is project improvements and we'll reimburse if there's any. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure the MDA was you know, basically what dictated the engineering report, so. Okay, all and the MDA would, would trump that, yeah. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we'll let you do it. I move that we approve Cliff Lake Mountain Master Development Agreement and Neighborhood Plan located approximately south of the corner of Pioneer Crossing and Saratoga Road, ordinance 24-14 as dated today, with all staff findings and conditions with clarification on the following points. The flat roofs would be permitted as long as the angles of the um, peripheral, the elevation, hide the flat roof and the, amenity, the uh, infrastructure that's on the roof. Um, setbacks allowed from 20 to 15 feet in the townhomes and 20 to 15 in the senior instead of the 10 and a half. Um, the density additional 23 units from eight to 8.25 not be allowed. The parking location for 200 feet requirement um, 
be uh, waived because of, and the parking on driveways would meet that requirement because they meet all parking, guest parking requirements per code. Um, the senior parking reduction um, is proposed that for the one bedroom units, it's 1.25 and I'm throwing out there um, 1.75 for the two with the condition that if staff comes back in, in due time, to Stephen's point, with a recommendation for senior living apartments and that number is less, then the applicant would, be, would qualify for that reduction. Also, the um, amendment for the neighborhood plan 6A for Folsom Road mass, matches the master development agreement. The master development agreement at 6, 6A in 6A the master, in the master development agreement. Not the neighborhood plan. Is addressed for Folsom, Flossom Road. Right. Also, that the right of way um, for the that meets the transportation master plan of the city for the Pioneer Crossing cross section is preserved. And then I will, for yours on um, item nine, that the master development agreement is the for the engineering requirement. Okay. okay. I have a very long first. Do I have a second? I have, I'll second it, but okay. I do have a question for I, the applicant. Okay. The, the change in your setback from 20 to, you were asking 10 and a half and the motion was for 15. Does that complicate your world? Of course. It, it, it probably will. We're gonna probably have to shrink the park areas and the green space up a little bit. Um, we do have ample green space, so it's, we'll still have ample, but it will make for less desirable parks for the residents. If we're able to shrink the private right-of-way for the alleys from 45 in so that we can create a larger PUE, would that be allowed by staff? So, so we wouldn't have to move the buildings, but rather the PUE would increase and the private right-of-way would just shrink, but the asphalt would stay the same. Um, is that the issue? That's hard to answer on the spot. Yeah, to answer that on the spot, I don't. I, I would. I would don't. Need so to, it's yeah. workable. Is my so right, my right now we have a motion on the table. Yeah. If you can get creative working with staff. Yep. When we do amendments, because we've we've spent a lot of time today, it will go much quicker if there's something that is agreed with staff and you guys can figure it out. It, it could be very fast. Okay. I'm gonna get my motions. Okay. First from Councilman Converse. Second from Councilman Carn. Any further discussion? You oh. need to add the evergreen trees. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> um, amended first that um, you can have deciduous trees throughout. No requirement for evergreen. Second. Okay. I'm okay with everything but the trees now. <laughs> <laughs> May I clarify, was the 1.75 for the two bedrooms yes. and 1.25 for one bedroom? Yes. Correct. So it's basically a half additional 0.5 for the extra bedroom, not in a whole additional stall. stall. Okay. Any other? Okay, uh, Councilwoman Barton. Aye. Comber. Aye. Wilden. Aye. Carn. Aye. Wadman. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I'm here for the next item too, so I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was okay. on my number four. <laughs> Is the air conditioner not working? Hey, so. Kicking on a little bit. But it's warm in here. As I say, hopefully your dad's meeting's running as smooth this evening, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he's not around. <laughs> I know, but hopefully, oh, he's not there tonight? No, he's, uh, he's on vacation. Okay. You never do that. You don't get what? back. You're always I know. There. <laughs> I've missed one time in 14 years. <laughs> one time. Yeah. Okay. This of approximately 18.3 acres. It includes five office warehouse lots ranging in from acreage of 0.813 acres to 5.64 acres. The um, there is landscaping across Redwood Road that fronts the subdivision that they will that they have included. It's an off-site landscaping credit. 
And then they have uh, the trail that runs along the east side of the property. There was some discussion during planning commission that included uh, the planning commission regarding the trail, including the planning commission's making a motion. So, and I didn't get that in your conditions. So just um, keep note that the condition that the planning commission added was with the condition, addition of a condition that the city and applicant agree to move forward based on the mutual mutually agreed upon legal description of the easement with approval from the canal company in writing. We met with a developer today to work that, that out. And so the trail easement and the public access easement, the developer has um, agreed to work that out with the canal company. So, um, but just to include that into your motion. And then, so the easements along this trail are really crazy. There are a lot of them. We do have a 30-foot stormwater and sewer easement, and that's essentially where the trail is located in, is that easement. However, there's a lot of different canal company easements, and so, and then there's this property that does not have a label from Utah County of who owns it. And so that's where a lot of the discussion in Planning Commission came from. There was a lot of confusion, but I believe we came to a mutually agreed upon resolution for that. Um, this this afternoon, um, there are some concerns regarding the um, that Mr. Lindstrom would probably will probably bring up regarding the right of way, the intersection at Redwood Road and Stagecoach Drive. I'll pull that back up here. So where <laughs> Stagecoach Drive and Redwood Road meet, there were some requirements that the city in regards to reimbursement agreement, but I believe Mr. Lindstrom had something to say upon that. Did you? Um, well, when we were in the process of designing this, we just had a, we just had, um, a red line requirement asking us to add additional lanes into this cross section. And we moved forward with that design through the um, process with UDOT and with our traffic signal study and traffic study. Um, and so in the development agreement we just had in there that was approved that um, the city would reimburse us for those additional lanes. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah uh, when we got our original red lines back, uh, this is before we went to UDOT, they requested these two extra lane staff did. And then also on the other side, I think it's called Harvest Hills Boulevard, uh, we had a red line that uh, told us we had to uh, take out the center section and put a left-hand turn lane in, uh, which uh, which uh, is on city-owned property, and and uh, there's, our project has no impact on that, so it's something we'd look for reimbursement from the from the city on that too. So uh, the development agreement specifically said that uh, the city would reimburse us for the extra two lanes. Uh, was talking to staff, and they they're not sure that they want to do that now and want us to put a cost together and stuff to see if there are some other options we can do uh, with with the UDOT stuff I and mean, with the UDOT signal light already done, there's gonna be costs involved changing it back or moving forward and we're just gonna work with staff to see what the best way to do with that is. Uh, but I think we've come to, uh, they've asked us to put together some cost figures uh, so you'd know how much money you're spending and then uh, uh, to either change it or to move it forward um, and so there's a little bit of unknown here. Yeah. Kevin, you had comment. Uh, I just was gonna address any of the issues with, with the canal, um, but with respect to this issue, I, I'm in, I think we're in agreement about um, upsizing costs would be reimbursable, but the question is, is what is reimbursable? What is, is this a project or is this a system improvement? That, that's yet to be resolved, but that'll be coming back most likely to the council for approval at some point. What about the turn lane that, that he was talking about? I think Jeremy would be better to speak on that, but I, for sure, as far as if this is a project improvement, system improvement, city reimburses for the difference. Um, that, but the, the, goal, the, the question and the debate is what is the project versus the system improvement that will be resolved later. Go ahead, Jeremy, if you want to comment. <laughs> yeah, try, try not to be contentious because it doesn't need to be, but it is complicated. Um, I think 
it's tricky because typically all lights on DOT roads are either paid for by the DOT because they, you know, some of our tax dollars go towards funding lights like Aspen Hills Boulevard is, you know, the city is not paying for those. And the city is, in my experience, has not historically contributed to the cost of, of lights on Redwood. Now there have been cost sharing agreements between developers and the DOT sometimes, and that's the DOT and the developers work together. This situation is complicated by a development agreement that does have language that says if the city requires widening. Um, so the red lines that were referenced were, were done on the concept plans, that, and in those comments predate the development agreement, right? So the development agreement was entered into after some reviews had been done. Those reviews talked about the widening. They have a bunch of disclaimers that saying, you know, you need to do whatever UDOT requires you to do. Here's our ideas on what it may be required, but it has a lot of comments about ultimately UDOT decides that. So now you've got this quagmire as to if there are widening for, for turn lanes, if there's improvements across the road to line up those lanes, pay for those. Should it be UDOT? Should it be the city? Had, if there was not a development agreement, then typically it would be something that we would say, to, hey, this is between the developer and UDOT. The fact that we have a development agreement that has this ambiguous language, the language itself is not ambiguous. It says if the city requires widening. What's ambiguous is, is it the city requiring it? Is the UDOT requiring it? And that's where it's kind of got messy. So. This, doesn't, this isn't decided by the council tonight, though. Like I, mean, like I mentioned, this would be coming back in, a, in a, a reimbursement agreement that staff recommends for approval by the council. So we're not. Okay. You're not deciding the reimbursement tonight. Okay. And by and large, all we've done is followed the red lines that with the city. Because they, they told us we had to widen the road, and they told us we had to, to redo the do the property and design it on the other side of the road that we don't own. So all we did was follow red lines, and so that's where the, that's why uh, we we disagree a little bit, and I don't know how that's going to be solved. It might be the attorneys. I don't know. Okay, Gina. Staff doesn't have any other. Okay. Any other items on this? There's um, no other. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. There's no other questions or comments. We can entertain a motion. I'll make. Uh, I move that we approve business item number five, Westport Business Park Preliminary Plat, located approximately two uh, two thousand north in Redwood Road, Parker. As applicant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with staff findings and conditions. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, have a first from Councilwoman Barton. Second. I have a second, Councilman Wilden. Any further discussion on the motion? Just to remind you to add that mm. the condition that the Planning Commission put in the staff oh, report in their minutes. Legal description with canals. I'll add, I'll um, amend my motion to add that we have a mutually legal agreement. Oh, agreement around, uh, the, canal. around the canal easement. Does that fix that? Okay. I have an amended first. Second. Amended second. Any further discussion? Wadman? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Barton? Aye. Comber? Aye. Parn? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Hey, thanks so much. Yep. Uh, hey, one of the, I noticed in our staff report that, and we got notified about uh, six, eight months ago, that the sewer capacity may have problems out there where the city can't service us. Uh, are you aware of when that's going to be fixed? I think they've known about this for a year and a half or so. Or do we know if is that getting solved, or uh, or do they have a timeline? Yeah. So, so that's not an issue. Not in Fantastic. the north. Yeah. Not in the north part of the city. Yeah. That, thanks so much. Yeah. That's good news. <laughs> hey, there's a request from the council for a five-minute break. So we will readjourn at five after. That yeah, was great. <laughs> I know. We're giving the old guys a little longer time. It's not. <laughs>